Hello, everyone. My name is Brian, and uh, welcome to Brian Continues to Make Amazing Financial Decisions and decks that no one's ever heard of, nor would anyone want to play. And today we have Mono White Affinity Taxes Hammerless Hammer Blink Thing? Uh, it, it was given to me as a list in just entitled White Affinity, but there's no affinity creatures. <laughs> Uh, and it, it's essentially like hammer, except there's no hammer and it has taxing pieces, but no taxes. And at this point, I'm just kind of looping over and over again. So let's hop right into it. So this on its very level is an ephemerate solitude deck. That's right. I finally bit the bullet and got myself some solitudes. So solitude, if you've never run into it, how lucky are you? But essentially, it's one of the big bads from Modern Horizons 2. When it comes into play, it sorts to plowshare something, i.e. exiling it from the game, and its controller gets to gain life equal to its power. Now, the thing about this is... I can either cast it with flash by paying five mana or by exiling a white card from my hand. So I have a whole bunch of white cards. You want to essentially evoke this and then ephemerate it. This way you get to take out two creatures and keep your solitude on the field as well. Then the next turn you get to exile another creature. So Ephemerate plus Solitude cracked in half. Down here, Esper Sentinel. If you're playing white, see if you can cram in Esper Sentinel. It's great. It's card draw, especially in a deck like this that has equipment. I can put equipment on this guy and just make him big so that they have to. Uh, essentially, let me draw the card because it's more mana than it's worth. We got some portable holes, which is okay removal. I believe these portable holes are here because we have the Nettle Cysts and the Urza Sagas, whereas something like Path to Exile, in my opinion, would be better. Then again, I'm a 7 out of 10 Magic the Gathering player on a good day, so I'm sure this is right. A single Pithing Needle, as well as a single Relic of Progenitus and a Shadow Spear. These are here to be Urza Saga targets. Most of the time I'll be getting Shadow Spear, but there are times getting a Pithing Needle to stop someone from doing something specific, or getting a Relic Progenitus out of your deck because your opponent is doing graveyard shenanigans in game one is the correct option. Finally, we have two Springleaf Drums, give ourselves a little bit of mana, also more Urza Saga targets. And finally, Voyager's Staff, which is just another blink thing. Now you can use this to get a blocker out of the way to win the game. You could use this on Solitude to keep it or just to exile another thing. You could use it on Stoneforge Mystic, which we might as well talk about now, to search up another equipment. So here we have another weird fetchy piece, which is Stoneforge Mystic. Now this can grab the Cauldre Complete, the Nettle Cysts, or the Shadow Spear, depending on what you need. And with things like Cauldre Complete, you can put them into play very, very cheaply. So just another way to close out the game. Then again, we've talked about this. A turn three call to complete while it is threatening. If your opponent is aggro, they might be going faster. If your opponent is controlled, they can probably answer it. But hey, she's in here. For Ingenious Smith, I was looking forward to playing with this. So this is just one of those modern cards that has so much text on it. It says when it comes into play, look at the top four of your library and put a artifact card from those four into your hand. And also whenever one or more artifacts enters the battlefield, put a plus one plus one counter on Ingenious Smith. This only happens once each turn. So if you can get artifacts into play on your opponent's turn, it'll get even bigger. But even just playing out Dark Steel Citadel or Treasure Vault will activate Ingenious Smith and make it bigger. We have two nettle cysts um i am always slightly under wowed by nettle cysts but the fact that i have the stoneforge mystics makes it slightly more interesting to get essentially a construct uh, piece of equipment out there for solitudes which we already talked about don't leave home without them and now here's something real interesting that also works with ephemerate and voyager staff combat thresher so combat thresher isn't uncommon from the new Brothers War. So hey, some Brothers War content, even though everyone's already moved on to the next thing. And uh, when it comes into play, you draw a card and you can prototype it and you can blink it and draw many cards. I don't think I would ever play this for seven, but hey, for three, draw a card, double strike, and then you can do other things with it. Not that bad. Now the lands are also kind of interesting. We have four Dark Steel Citadel, again, just to pump up your artifact count for Nettle Cyst and Urza Saga. One Ajano Seed of the Empire, it's essentially free and you can use it to, you know, knock other people around and deal for damage whole bunch of planes two treasure vaults and four urza saga now urza saga just wins the game on its own and you just try and defend yourself around dropping two giant construct tokens giving one of them the shadow spear and winning the game now i've done some testing games with this and it's a very grindy very intricate headache inducing version of playing magic because you're playing hammerless hammer taxless taxless and blinkless blink essentially and 
Yeah, it can win games. It's very fun, but it's very, very interesting. And that's not helped by its sideboard, which seems to be very, very concerned about enchantments for reasons I never quite understood. Uh, Citizen's Crowbar, which can destroy an artifact or enchantment. Neat. Uh, Hollowed Moonlight, this is for things like rhinos and stuff. So, you know, stop things from coming into play. Uh, Lauren of the Third Path, so this also destroys artifact or enchantments upon entry of the battlefield. Also, you can force you and your opponent to draw a card, so if we happen to go up against somebody who's playing uh, Ad Nauseum, we can really hose them with this card. Uh, Pithing Needle, again, just more Pithing Needles, more better. Another Relic of Progenitus, in case you need it. Uh, this is to break equipment. So if you go up against someone else's equipment deck, like Hammer, you can blow up their equipment, which is nice. Void Mirrors, again, to stop things like Cascade and Tron. And finally, Sword of Feast and Famine. Good against Jundi kind of decks. Good to untap all your lands. Um, I, I don't think you really use it to attack your opponent's hand. But hey, it's good and it's the list I found. We might change it as we go along. But that is this weird white affinity deck. Uh, why don't we take it into some games and see how I can screw it up? All right, we have won the die roll. Let's move this out of the way. And yes, I would love to play first. Uh, this seems amazing. Snapkeep. So normally you want to play out Urza Saga second turn, but because we have a Springleaf Drum... Actually, no, that doesn't work because Esper Sentinel needs a mana. So we are going to play that second. I, I tell a lie. If we had an Ornithopter, we could do it. And <laughs> silly Brian, I'm still thinking like I'm playing an actual affinity deck, but uh, none of those in here. Oh, what's this? Goblin Guide. Okay, looks like we might be up against Burn. We'll just take the two. Yep, Stoneforge Mystic. Well, opponent, you've kind of seen what's happening here. Unfortunately, we're not playing Batter Skull, which would be nice. Uh, but we will drop an Urza Saga, Julio. And we will play Stoneforge Mystic. Um, I mean, we'll get Cauldra Complete. I don't see us playing it next turn because we probably want to make an Artifact Doodad, but... We'll swing in with Esper Sentinel and we'll see how the, the turn progresses. Like, Stoneforge Mystic might just, just just die. It might just get shocked off the field. Who knows? All right, opponent plays another mountain. Maybe some kind of budget red deck, which, again, that'll that'll catch you if you're sleeping. Legion Loyalist. Okay, so it's probably just 8 whack at this point. Uh, I really, really wish I had Batter Skull now, but oh well. Looks like they're just going to send in Goblin Guide. Okay, we're going to let this go. This Esper Sentinel is really not going to kill anything, huh? Um, we'll play out a Plains. We'll play out Springleaf Drum. And we'll just... Because we're not going to attack with Cauldre Complete, I don't think. That can't possibly be the right answer. So we'll just kind of pass. If they have some sort of split set... If they have, like, Sudden Shock, then congratulations. But I think leaving Cauldre Complete on D is fine for this turn. And then next turn, once we have the Shadow Spear, we can gain a whole bunch of life. But... This is just where we're at at this exact moment. If they don't attack, that's amazing for us. Opponent is claiming he misclicked. So, oh, he scooped the whole match because he misclicked. Well, that sure is a start to the day, isn't it? Um, Technical victory, moving on to, to game two. All right, welcome to maybe the first or second game. I don't know because the first guy kind of scooped when his game didn't go perfectly. Uh, but hey... At least in this one, we lost the die roll. This is a perfectly keepable hand, however. Thanks to Urza Saga, essentially. Lair of the Hydra. So normally that's um, that's Yogmoth, the Lair of the Hydra. Ingenious Smith. So I'm not going to soul read the Lair, the, uh, the Yogmoth on the guy. I think I'll just play out Springleaf Drum and pass. And if next turn we see more kind of Yogi things... I'll put it down, but for right now, I think the Springleaf Drum is good enough. Also, since we drew Ingenious Smith, we can Solitude if we need to. Uh, opponent is really thinking about what they're doing. Marsh Flats. Okay, so this this really does look like Yogg now. Esper Sentinel. Um, We haven't seen anything yet, so I'm just going to play this out kind of as is. Oh, are they going to gonna blow up my thing oh no they're just doing that sure all right so ingenious smith it's definitely yogmoth in my opinion but we can we can kind of set up here Ooh, we can get a cauldron complete that's neat uh we we do lose our ability to solitude now but i feel like this is correct kind of building up our board because we can we can pithing needle next turn do, 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 do. opponent is thinking real hard oh there we go swamp so what do you what do you put down opponent so far you've literally done nothing oh you're going to continue to do nothing. okay cool so here's what i think feels like they're thinking about busage okay cool so i'm just going to tap down this right now 
and run out the pithing needle on Yogmoth. Yogmoth Thran Physician. Okay, Coolio. Dude gets bigger. And now we swing in with our 3-3. Three, three. Crunch. All right, and we pass, and on their turn, we can make a Urza Saga token. Grief. That's fine. Um, hmm. Do we solitude in response to grief? I don't think we need to. They'll probably take solitude, and that lets us keep Esper Sentinel, but a 3-2 Menacer is not not super threatening, if I'm being honest. Oh, they took the Esper Sentinel. Well, good for me. And they're not doing anything else, so we'll just make our guy and continue to pump the Smith and Ephemerate. Well, that would have been helpful a moment ago. So do we want to make another construct token and just go get the Shadow Spear? Or do we want to float mana and be able to equip the Shadow Spear? I think we want to make the guy. We'll go get Shadow Spear, which uh, can't do anything with that right now. However, we do get to attack with two big creatures. Okay, and they're just giving up on grief as well, which is fine by me. And because we drew Ephemerate, we can Solitude. We can't solitude and then do the solitude trick because we don't have enough white cards but we can stop them from doing much i feel like there's not much they can do to get out of this another grief damn nation you say well that's fascinating um is there anything we want to do before that happens no i mean we get to draw a card though so we drew a planes which is neat I mean, we'll get to play the Combat Thresher, and then we can ephemerate the Combat Thresher and just draw the cards. But again, our opponent does have quite a few cards in hand still, so we will see what they're up to. Nettle Cyst, that seems interesting for a later turn. I think drawing with Combat Thresher is just the correct move. They sure make prototypes look awful on Mitgo. Ah, uh, cool, we'll pass. Kind of looking for more mana now. But also, we'll have a 3-3 a three, three double striker in a hot second. Unless they play something that Solitude's gonna take out and then Ephemerate. Well, then I guess we could Ephemerate the Combat Thresher on our upkeep, which is fine, too. Another Grief paid for. Yeah, so we'll Solitude that. All right, so very important how you stack this, ladies and gentlemen. So we Evoke Exile Ingenious Smith. We want the Evoke Tricker to be first, and then that. Okay, so we stack it that way. Use that. Hold down control just in case. The holding down control in Mitgo puts you into like control mode, what we want. Yep. So we'll evoke this. Tapping the creature itself. Sweet. Very the same thing. Now he's super dead. I want to gain some life. We get to keep our thing. He'll probably take the nettle cyst out of our hand because there's not much more going on. And he really can't cast a creature right now because we have the, the thing coming back. Yeah, it took nettle cyst. Arbor elf. Pretty sure I could just ignore that. I'm going to cast this targeting my Thresher so I get to draw a card. Ooh, and a portable hole, so I get to kill that thing anyway? So we'll play Ingenious Smith, take a Darksteel Citadel, play a Darksteel Citadel, pump the thing, portable hole, the Arbor Elf, scoop it up. All right, um, I can even equip the Shadow Spear, but I kind of want the Shadow Spear on Combat Thresher, so I'm just going to attack with the Solitude, and then we'll tap and tap, whip that guy. <laughs> why? Why did it do that? <laughs> No other creatures do that. Why do you do that? Just just text over art. All right. Uh, if they have another wrath, they have another wrath. Nope, we got it. Nope. And another person scoops. Come on, guys. I'm trying to play a deck here. Going on to match three. All right. So match three, uh, you'd be forgiven for thinking I'm playing best of one, but I'm not. All right, uh, no white mana. I, I don't think we can keep a no white mana hand with this deck. Uh, deck, what did I just say? Okay, we'll keep this. We gotta put two back, hey? So, Pithing Needle's an easy choice, and mm, probably the Combat Thresher, and we'll keep the Solitude and Stoneforge Mystic. So this puts our opponent in a really good spot. Hopefully that doesn't mean they scoop. Oh, we're playing against actual affinity. That's neat. Vault Scourge? Yeah, oh wow, we're playing against old affinity. It's been a while since I've seen a Vault Scourge. A Mox Amber. What is what is going on? So we'll just play a Plains and pass. Uh, we have the Solitude if we really need to do that, but then like our hand has almost nothing in it. So fingers crossed. Let's see what they're trying to do here. Mox Amber. There's their Urza Saga. That's fun. I mean, we have a thousand things in our sideboard for this matchup if we get to play a game two. Just attack for two. That's fine. I don't feel like we Solitude these guys right now. Not really doing much. We draw a Relic of Progenitus, which does bup kiss. So I am going to take a chance here, and I am going to do something rather than nothing and play Stoneforge Mystic. Yep, I'll go get Cauldra Complete, and I'll ship the turn. Now, I hope I find 
a white creature. That'd be great. Uh, but I think next turn might be Cauldra, depending on what our opponent does here, because we might just need the blocker. Okay, just, just swing in with Vault Scourge. Yeah, that's fine. That is more than fine by me. Ooh, we found another Solitude, so we're exactly where I want to be. Play out Darksteel Citadel. Um, and unfortunately for the Urza Saga, I think we Cauldra and we start racing. If they if they hadn't missed their land drop, I would have held back. But we have we have Solitude Solitude. Next turn we can probably even make uh, an Urza token. But for right now, let's just try and race them. So they have three more turns to try and kill us. Uh, all while having to do it with more than one creature because Solitude's a thing. So do they get Springleaf Drum or the Shadow Spear? I feel like it's gonna be Springleaf Drum. It's Shadow Spear. Okay. Put it on Memnite. All right. Well, I've seen enough. Goodbye, Vault Scourge. Please don't scoop opponent. I, I, I know what you're thinking, opponent. I know what you're thinking. Come on, buddy. Don't do it. Don't do it. Oh, thank God. All right. They gain one. Shadow Spear doesn't go anywhere. They come swinging in. Now they leave it up. What do we draw? We draw another Stoneforge Mystic. All right. So definitely make a dude. Go get the Shadow Spear. Then play a land. Relic their thing. And just attack with both creatures. I don't think they'll block, but if they want to throw away a Memnite, they could have dealt me a damage for a Stoneforge Mystic damage to Navi Dagon. Okay, cool. So we put them to 10. Neat. They still don't have many turns to do anything. All right, and the opponent scoops the game. Please don't scoop the match. <laughs> Please, come on, buddy. Uh, so Loran, yeah, because this gets an artifact or enchantment. That'll work. Citizen's Crowbar, I suppose. Do I want the Mantry Gurusy? Maybe, maybe, maybe. Void Mirror seems interesting. Let's see what I want to take out. So Nettle Cyst, you're not amazing. Um, Esper Sentinel, they really don't have any... They really don't have any non-creature spells do that. So if we take out the Esper Sentinels, we have six cards to put in. So we definitely want the Lorraines and the Citizen's Crowbar. That's easy. Um, We'll keep in the one... We can get get rid of the Relic because that doesn't do anything. Uh, what do I want to put in? I guess I could put this in in case I need to kill their Shadow Spear. And then I can put in two Void Mirrors. I think that's enough. And I just have to remember not to play Void Mirror and then cast Solitude. Because we didn't see any mana colors on their side. Maybe just one Void Mirror. And we'll put in a second Pithing Needle to take out their Urza Sagas if they get it and we don't. Let's try that. All right. Oh man, so many Lorraines of the third path. Seems fine to me. I'll keep. First turn, not so much. Second turn. Okay, so it is just normal affinity and they just had a bad draw last time. Although Vault Scourge is kind of spicy. So play out this, pass the turn. Next turn, we'll Ingenious Smith. Turn after that, we'll Lorraine of the third path and just start killing their stuff. Oh, buddy. Do we get to kill their Urza Saga? Not really, I suppose. Brawl. Is it like a storm deck? Fascinating. Mantra Gursi. Well... Not quite for now. Let's just play out the Ingenious Smith. And we'll take the Darksteel Citadel. Let's see, do they play a, a non-tap land? Because I have many Lorraines, so I can blow up all their stuff. Playing a Springleaf Drum, fascinating. Okay, so we'll get to blow up quite a few of their things. There's the Shadow Spear, okay. I don't think they have any way of countering Loran planes. Probably fine just to play out the planes right now. Ran. I guess we missed out on a plus one, plus one counter. I guess that was kind of silly. I'm not used to playing with Ingenious Smith, I'd be able to tell. All right, uh, kaboom. So there goes their Urza Saga, which I feel is important. Pass the turn. Hopefully they really needed that. <laughs> okay, they're just gonna start drawing. That was weird. So that was minus three, and they played it for one mana. How does that work? Because one, two, three, this isn't an artifact. Am I missing the math here? How did they How did they cast that for one? Somebody, somebody in the comments tell me how they... They cast Thought Cast for one, even though it's three artifacts and they got one mana, which was like, oh no, Brawl, ha ha ha, Brawl, Brawl, Brawl. I got it, I got it. Everyone spam it in the, in the thing anyway. Why not? Emery, okay, I kind of saw her coming based on the Mox Amber. Oh boy, this is all sorts of weird. All right, we draw. We'll play out our artifact land this time. Uh-huh. So I think what we want to do is ephemerate the Loran, and blow up their Springleaf Drum. And then this might be... Do we want to blow up the Shadow Spear? I guess that doesn't really make sense to blow up the Shadow Spear. And they, they could just Emery back the other thing. So I guess we want to start developing our board, which would be playing Stoneforge Mystic. Although I don't think there's any equipment left in the deck. We'll, we'll take a look. Uh-oh, guys. I think this guy's salting too. I think we found the saltiest deck in Modern. Oh, no. 
Come on, please don't. Please don't, opponent. We were so close. Come on. Although apparently I am I'm very impressed with uh Loran here. Even though it's just a white um reliquary mage. What's the what's the green thing called? The green elf that's three mana, two one that blows up something. I think it starts with an R. I don't know. I'm I'm bad at magic. Although I have time to look it up. Our opponent's not doing anything. Oh, our opponent came back. Okay, cool. Uh, sure, I don't think there's anything left in the deck. Oh, there's Citizen's Crowbar and the Shadow Spear. What does this do again? I can destroy another enchantment. Do I have anything to really start whacking in? I really don't have anything to whack in. So let's get this Citizen's Crowbar, because I think that's just going to be more useful. Um, I don't have any mana, though. But I can swing in with Ingenious Smith, because it is a 2-2. Two -two. So hoorah. All right, our opponent takes it on the chin, and we continue on after our opponent's little... Little bout of narcolepsy. Glimmer Void. All right. So now if they really wanted, they could put Shadow Spear on something. I mean, little do they know that we could just break it. <laughs> I'm real interested why they put the Shadow Spear. Oh, another Springleaf Drum. Oh boy. I can't wait to start blowing stuff up. <laughs> now they'd have to tap down to put it on something. I have essentially a whole bunch of uh, blow, blow stuff up in the uh, in the hand right now. In fact, half of, more than half of my hand is blow stuff up. They Soldier's Companion. They can't cycle it. Oh no, they they scoop. They do scoop the match. Salt everywhere. All right, we lost the die roll yet again. Um, I I would love to get a full game in. This is an unkeepable hand because it has no white mana. Holy moly, that's better. So keep put Shadow Spear to the bottom probably because we can always find that with Urza Saga and our hand doesn't really deem it all that necessary. Hopefully Ingenious Smith can find us one of our artifact lands. Ephemerate. All right, well I'll play a Plains here. That'll confuse you. Goes and plays a Jund Trial. Be interesting to see how this deck is versus Jund. Plays Verdant Catacomb. Are right, you just gonna play Goyfy Boy? Yep, it's just a Goyf. Little baby Goyf. All right. Mm, we find a Stone Fort stick, but we don't have a land drop for next turn. We're playing against Jund, so I have to assume they have a whole bunch of removal. Well, I'm just gonna portable hold a Goyf, and then next turn we'll Ingenious Smith unless we find a land. If we find a land, we can Stone Forge. Cause like the whole idea is hopefully we find a Plains. This way we can Stone Forge Mystic, and then when they Try to remove Stoneforge Mystic. We can ephemerate Stoneforge Mystic. Untap. They must have a Jund charm. Relic of Progenitai. Well, we're just going to Ingenious Smith and hopefully find an artifact land. These artifact land. Ithing Needle or Portable Hole. Let's say Portable Hole. And we'll just pass the turn. So they'll probably impulse the new Jund charm or Riveteer's charm, whatever it's called, but they'll just do it on the mode where they get to look at the top two and play it until the end of their next turn. Yep. Oh, it's top three. And the top three was all lands. Oof. Well, I suppose it must feel good to not have to draw three lands. So, I mean, that's fine. And let's be fair, if they play Lily, we're kind of behind the eight ball as well. So this this will probably get some sort of black source and then they'll play Lily and then they'll kill Ingenious Smith, probably. Or it could be a Bloodbraid Elf. Yep, Bloodbraid Elf. So it could, it could still be a Lily. Ragavan. Ooh, neat. There's Ragavan. There's Bloodbraid Elf. We really need to find more lands. Yep, Bloodbraid coming in hot. And we can do about that. We draw a Plains. Fascinating. So play the planes. Play Stoneforge Mystic. Go get Cauldra complete. Then I think we get rid of Ragavan just in case. And now we leave Ingenious Smith up, more than willing to trade Ingenious Smith for Bloodbraid Elf. Portable Hole, really, really doing work here now. If they have a K command, that's real bad news, but we'll see what we can get done. But it plays another land. Seems like they have no no worries about lands anytime soon. Briss. So what, they're probably just going to make a... Uh... I mean, they might sack Bloodbraid Elf. Okay, yeah, they're getting rid of Bloodbraid Elf to kill the Stoneforge Mystic. Fascinating. Yeah, we can't save that. But honestly, I'm not that worried about it because that means Gris is probably going to die. Another Ingenious Smith. Well, I think the first thing we do is we see if Gris actually dies. Hmm, fascinating. So how do we develop our board the best? Maybe it's just Combat Thresher and hope really hard it survives. <laughs> like, double cross fingers it survives. Ooh, we found a land. Now, unless they Jun Charm us, it will survive. And we get to draw cards on cards on cards on cards. Seems like our opponents is kind of flooding out a bit. <laughs> they have even more lands. No no need for Ren and Six when all you have is lands. What do we have now? I only have two cards left. This is the Lily of the Veil. Okay, so hopefully they choose Sacrifice. Because we'll give up on Ingenious Smith. The Combat Thresher is about to be a lot cooler. Seasoned Pyromancer. Okay, so they're definitely going to kill one of our creatures. They draw two, which is fine. Yeah, we'll give up on the smith. All right, Ephemerate, draw a card. Pithing Needle, okay, that solves our problem. Okay, and we will even rebound again. Nito, draw so many cards. Ooh, and an Urza Saga. Do one of these. 
uh, do one of these. Let's see, find the portable hole. Then we turn off Lily. Liliana of the Veil. Neat. That grows. No portable hole target. Um, you just play Relic out now. Pop it to draw a card in a second. In the meantime, we'll make them start doing stuff with their graveyard. All right, and we'll pass the turn. Probably tapped wrong. Probably could have tapped so that I kept Ephemerate up to draw even more cards with Combat Thresher. But again, I am very bad at the game of Magic. We lose our Combat Thresher because I mistapped. Eat. Really just, just rubbing it in, huh? Okay. Luckily for us, we have big, big creatures coming next turn in uh, in Urza's token. Oh, don't be a dash of Anne. Come on on boo he said boo i dislike ragavan i even play with ragavan and i think ragavan should be banned it's just such a feel bad card all right what do you steal that's gonna destroy my own deck urza saga okay well that's fine back to his hand fine we draw springleaf drum which does nothing uh okay so we will make an urza saga token as they attack in the meantime no reason not to play out springleaf drum to continue to blow up their graveyard all right so we'll pass it'll be one two three four five six a six six which is nothing to scoff at there's ragavan again sure thing oh just played out though well then it's another gris this is a wren sure not terribly worried about wren they literally just have a land in their hand i mean they have as much land as jun could ever want we'll probably portable hole wren and we'll just have blockers up for ragavan you know, the thing we can hope for is that we draw some kind of land. What did I say? No worries. Big bad Urza. Do we want to cash in the relic? We probably can. Might be nice to... That's fascinating. All right, so one, two, and then three. We go get the Shadow Spear. And then what do we do? I mean, we have many portable holes, so we can at least portable hole the Ren. And then we can tap this guy, equip Shadow Spear to this guy... And when they think they're safe attacking, we'll just solitude the Ragavan. I have to imagine they just let themselves go to one. Oh no, they're gonna try and save a little life. I suppose they reckon if they draw dead, they can always do the uh, make some dies thing. But I'm gonna have such a big trampler that I don't think it matters. Like the best thing they can find is a Bloodbraid Elf here. You know, they're good. See, that's the kind of match I was more expecting with this deck. So against Jun, Sword of Feast and Famine works quite well. Relic of Progenitus works quite well. Pithing Needle works quite well. What doesn't work? Well, Nettle Cysts, you're not very impressive. Um, maybe I'm wrong, but personally, I don't see it. What's the final cut? Like, this is a hard cut. Uh, maybe the Voyager Staff? And then this way we have, you know, a replacement for the three drops and then two things we can get off the Urza Sagas and we just try that. I think we can all agree Voyager's Staff is pretty, pretty weak. Alrighty, not a bad hand. I mean, Ingenious Sm Smith makes this anything, so... I mean, obviously, we're going to try and open with Stoneforge Mystic, but if they have a whole bunch of um, discard cards, then the Ingenious Smithish should be able to get us back into it. They did Mulda 6. So, Verdant Catacombs, did I did I call it? Are they going straight for the... Uh, oh, no. No spell, which is great, because we actually had no plan for Ragavan. Another planes, all right. Uh, you know, we might as well run this out. No reason not to. So if they were just going to plan on dashing Ragavan, that's another thing, too. We will lose to just them Ragavanning our best cards. It's the Jun Triome. Please don't have Ragavan. Please don't have Ragavan. No monkey, no monkey, no monkey, no monkey. Hey, this could be no monkey. It could be a Torak, too. This looks... Oh, Tarmogoyf. Okay. I am more than happy to see Tarmogoyf. Isn't modern such a weird place when you're like, oh, Tarmogoyf. I, I don't care about Tarmogoyf. We could Tarmogoyf all day. Uh... In fact, I even have a Solitude now, but let's Stoneforge Mystic. I, d I don't think this thing's going to live. Zero percent chance, but hey, we'll try. If anybody's wondering what I'm holding, it's a, it's a tiny Batmobile. For some reason, it's maroon. I think they called it Tuned and Marooned. I bought it at Kohl's for like $2. All right, what do we get? Cauldra or Sword of Feast and Famine? Sword of Feast and Famine is interesting, but... I actually think Cauldre Complete is just correct, and then we just really hope. No, nah, I mean, it's Jun. Let's get Sword of Feast and Famine. Because I don't, I don't think Stoneforge is going to live. I think they're going to kill it somehow. But Crypt. So now they're within Riveteer Charm. Liliana of the Veil. Poor thing. See, this is why we didn't get Cauldre. So it gets rid of Stoneforge. That's fine. I'm just going to kill Tarmogoyf now. You know, maybe I should have done this before Stoneforge hit the graveyard. Definitely I should have done this before Stoneforge hit the graveyard. But hey... Ah, uh, bad at this game. So opponent gains an extra life out of my laziness. And we get an Esper Sentinel. Well, played that a little too fast, but hey, at least Esper Sentinel will trigger Ingenious Smith. Counting my misplays on my toes at this point. Our opponent uh, has gone to the same place 
the last opponent went to. All right, they're back. Alter complete, that's a no. Portable hole, pithing needle. Pithing needle, please and thank you. Uh, in fact, new plan. <laughs> Liliana of the Vale. Take that, Lily. All right. So our Artificer gets stronger. If they K command and kill our Artificer and our Pithing Needle, we feel sad. But hopefully we can we draw one more land and then we can play Esper Sentinel and Sword of Feast and Famine next turn. Because once we get Sword of Feast and Famine on the card, I think once we start hitting them, we'll just really start to eat into whatever advantage Jund might have. But hey, I could be wrong. I often am. Renin six, sure. So now they're going to have a loop of cards. What do we do now? <laughs> Ren's actually kind of annoying. I mean, maybe we find our second Pithing Needle. That'd be great, but I don't think so. Oh no, and they actually have something to play too. It's Dashavan. We have to trade. Lightning Bolt. Oh well. <laughs> sure, opponent. Question is, how many Lightning Bolts do you have? So we can play Sword of Feast and Famine and just be shields down for a turn. Or we can play Ingenious Smith and Esper Sentinel, which is probably more correct. Because Ingenious Smith might find one of our our answers to Ren. No, but it did find a land, which is welcome. So we'll play the land, which will buff that. I actually don't want to play out Esper Sentinel because it'll just die, right? We'll just equip this thing and yield the turn. Their Ren gets to go off for another turn. But then next turn, if we get lucky and draw one more land, we'll get to, to play and equip sword just immediately. And if that doesn't work, we'll play out Combat Thresher and Esper Sentinel, and we'll make them choose what they want to kill with Ren. Because uh, I have to imagine they have something right now. There's no way they're just going to let me get in there with Ingenious Smith and more or less kill their thing for free. This looks like a fatal push. Oh no, is this the, the dreaded... Oh, it's just a Terminate. Okay, that's fine by me. Eh, that's not great. The fact that Season Pyromancer can draw cards even if they don't discard them is uh, not great in my opinion, but A, it's... Uh, Modern Horizons. Modern Horizons is gonna Modern Horizons. Land. Relic of Progenitus. Well, that at least would stop Ren, but I don't think that's what we're doing right now. Do I play out Sword of Feast and Famine and the Relic? I think we're at a high enough life total where hopefully this is fine. Ren's still a couple turns away from going off fully, so if we play this now, hopefully next time we can kind of get them. But we'll start eating their, their yard. Because really what we want to do is put something down that has some semblance of protection so it doesn't just get bamfed off the field when I try to equip sword, but we don't we don't have a lot of options here. We're kinda we're kinda losing to their value engine right now. Okay, we get hit for two. Armagoyf, only getting better. Do that again. We drew another Esper Sentinel. That's fascinating. So I think we go Esper Sentinel. Try and equip the thing. Probably dies. Oh no, okay. So now what do we do? I think we just pass. This is gonna be real close. We could really use an Urza Saga right now. Urza Saga would be pretty sweet. Lightning Bolt. Well, that's... So there goes our dude. Is he going to pay the three is the question. He does pay the three. This is for five. Nothing we can do about that. The problem is Ren now. So unless we find one of our portable holes or our other pithing needle. Uh, we'll just do this now. Find a Stoneforge Mystic. That's not nothing, but also not what we were hoping for. Yep, they just tick up no value on Ren. We really need draw an answer to Ren. Darksteel Citadel, not really an answer. See, all of our things cost white, but I think the best thing we can do is Esper Sentinel. Try and equip. Okay, that worked. Uh, and I think we'll just equip this out of bolt range and we'll just hope real hard. Um, they don't have anything in their graveyard. If they terminate like right now, that's kind of sucky, but... Like, they can emblem, and they don't really have a ton of cards in their hand, which might save us. Oh, get greedy and try and tick up Ren again. That would be great if they got greedy. I also have to imagine they're going to run out of land soon. Okay, so they tick up Ren, so we have a chance to try and draw into one of our answers again. Liliana of the Veil, sure. Are you going to pay all your mana, or are you going to let us draw a card? We draw a portable hole, okay. Good thing they got greedy. Do they have a way to shatter the Pithing Needle? Doesn't look like it. We draw a Stoneforge Mystic. Well, first things first, let's see if this happens. <laughs> so there goes their Ren, which was the biggest problem. Even if they get Ren back, he's reset, which is nice. I'm going to swing in with Esper Sentinel. Let's try and dome him a bit. If they use multiple re uh, removal spells to get rid of... Like, if they use Season Pyromancer and a Lightning Bolt to get rid of Esper Sentinel, that's fine. Air Asunder. Oh, sure, I get to draw another card. Okay, do you want to trade? Because trading's fine by me. Oh no, it's not a trade anymore. Tarmogoyf just eats it. That kind of stinks. All right, but I found a planes. So I can combat Thresher, put Shadow Spear on combat Thresher, or probably more likely just do this. 
go get the one that they can't destroy. Alter complete. And then just in case, here's a Stoneforge Mystic. So no more equipments, but I feel like we're in a pretty decent spot. So they can swing at us, they can deal us a whole bunch of damage, but next turn, unless they have multiple removal spells, Cauldre Complete comes down, as does Combat Thresher. And I feel like Cauldre Complete closes this game out. If they hadn't gotten greedy with Ren and they just emblemed it, I feel like we'd be in a much worse spot. But, you know, this isn't this isn't that bad. It comes swinging in, that's fine. We'll just take it. Going to nine is not what I'm worried about. Alpine Moon, sure thing. That turns off our Urza Sagas that we did not draw. And ephemerate. Well, that'll be super helpful in a second, but for right now, here comes Cauldra. I do think we even spend two mana to give it the Shadow Spear, rashing in for six. This way their uh, Tarmogoyf doesn't look that threatening. So we're at 15, they're at seven. Uh, I feel pretty good about this. We can even start throwing away Stoneforge Mystics in front of Tarmogoyf if I feel like it's gonna do anything important. But I have a Indestructible Dude, and the Jun Charm doesn't actually work because... The Phyrexian Germ token has a mana value of zero, so they'd have to have multiple removal spells, and they only have the two in their hand. I mean, I suppose what, what would really do us in is uh, shatter the Pithing Needle, kill one of the Stoneforge Mystics with, like, a K command, and then they have one other spell, like a, like a Fatal Push or something, and then they Liliana of the Veil down the, the Phyrexian Germ token, but... I don't know. I feel like if they had a shatter effect, they would have done it by now. But that could have just been, you know, the long run is what they were doing there. And they were like, oh, hey, we'll 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 put a Liliana of the Veil in the graveyard to make the Tarmogoyf slightly bigger. Our opponent is officially in the red zone. They are under five minutes. They must have something, right? And with green? They do have K command. OK, they didn't kill the Pithing Needle, though. Uh, and I have an Ephemerate to save my Stoneforge Mystic. So whatever you were expecting to do with the Stoneforge Mystic, not going to happen. And we win the match off of that. All right, folks. So 4-0 and oh going into match 5. Oh, my God. All right, into match 5. We want a die roll. Oh, my God. Uh, uh if we draw another land, this is going to be amazing. So let's try. I mean, if not, we'll, we'll at least have the solitude. So open up with an Esper Sentinel. And hopefully our opponent is playing something that plays a lot of spells where we get to draw into our land that we so desperately need. There's a Misty. That's a good start. Looks like they're just going to pass, though. We found the Darksteel Citadel. So now we can just run out Urza Saga. Also just going to attack with Esper Sentinel. And then we play Esper Sentinel. Modern Horizons 2. It's a really good set. All right, what do they get? Probably a Triome. Oh, a Hollow Fountain. So probably one of our Esper Sentinels is dead to one of the 4,000 things that Control has these days to take out one drops. Oh, are they going to kill them both? No, I just got to pass. All right, I can dig it. We draw Planes, which is fine. Play Darksteel Citadel. No reason to play any of our spells because making a Tarnstruct is better than most spells in Magic, especially when it only costs three mana, which is why I suppose Nettle Sistus costs it at three mana now that I say that out loud. I suppose the thing is, this is at instant speed and it's uncounterable. Field of Ruin. Oopsie. So we only get to make one Karnstruct token, but we do get to get one of our planes. And that was our opponent's entire turn. So I feel like the beatdown is real. We draw another Ephemerate, which is awesome. Uh, we'll even play out this guy to deal an extra damage. No, not, not full, full test. I want the prototype. There we are. Fear my mono white artifacts opponent. Okay, we draw an ingenious smith, which is neat, but not right now. Just crunch in, put him to nine real quick. Uh, and we have ephemerate to draw an extra card off a combat thresher. We have solitude ephemerate if they play anything. Oh, please don't be a wrath. I mean, we get to draw two, which is not the worst, but I don't, I don't want them to wrath. Pathing what? Pathing the Karn token, sure. They don't have a wrath, otherwise they just would have done that. Paying the Esper Sentinel taxes. Giving us another land, though. All right. So unless they do something weird, ephemerating the combat thresher is correct. Draw planes. We're just going to let ephemerate go. Oh, portable hole. Neat. So play a planes. I mean, we can't buff any of our things, so we'll just take them to one. Which, don't get me wrong, that's not dead when you're playing against control. We run out the ingenious smith. Probably only because if they wrath, it's going to take their whole turn and we can solitude ephemerate. Ooh, spell snare, but turns out we paid two mana to draw two cards. As opposed to the the one card it would have been had it been uh, not spell snared. And that's an easy win on game one. All right, so playing against control, you say. So what is control going to do? I don't know. So we probably want Pithing Needle. What do we not want? Nettlesis, sorry. Pithing Needle, you come in. Um, hmm. 
we didn't see a lot of what they were doing, did we? So it's just the second Pithing Needle, and that's like literally it. Because not a lot of control decks really use their graveyard anymore. So let's just try this. We want the Relic. Do we want something instead of the Relic? Uh, let's keep the Relic and let's try this. I honestly don't know exactly how to beat Control here, but I'm hoping they just uh, play very few spells and we win like last time. This seems good. This has lands and Esper Sentinels. And if they uh, Chalice for one, we're kind of screwed, hey? Well, let's hope they don't do that. <laughs> let's hope real hard that's not what happens. Although I don't think they'll Chalice for one because they had a Spell Snare. Land, Esper Sentinel, Yield. Another Flooded Strand. They didn't crack. They must need lands? Question mark. We draw. I'm going to play the Plains, and I'm going to attack with Esper Sentinel. I feel like whatever we play is going to get countered, but we're going to get a free draw out of it. So the question is, do we Stoneforge Mystic and just go for the Throat, or do we try and bait out the counter with Ingenious Smith? So... You know me, make them have it. Show me your counterspell opponent. Yeah, okay. So they'll have to double fetch here. Oh, unless it's just a spell snare. That could be it. Oh no, seems like it's just a normal counterspell. Yep, we do get to draw a card though. Another Ingenious Smith. So kind of wish we had done the Ingenious Smith now, but hey, next turn we'll get to cast all sorts of things. Please don't be Teferi. Aw. I mean, we don't really do a ton at instant speed anyway, but that doesn't make it any less annoying. Did draw a combat thresher though. <laughs> Already down to three. Oh, I guess I'll be at four cards once they bounce Esper Sentinel. Yep, bounce Esper Sentinel. Be my guest. Be my guest. Be my guest. Put my service to the test. All right. Draw a Relic of Progenitus. Well, for that card I talked about taking out of my deck. So play Esper Sentinel. Play Ingenious Smith. Play them in the wrong order. Uh, get a Darksteel Citadel. Make sure I never put a counter on Ingenious Smith. You know, that's, that's how against I am Ingenious Smith. I want to make sure it doesn't get that counter. This way, when they play Fire next turn and kill both of my creatures. All right, well, they can't Wrath. They only have one white mana. They tick up. We draw a Stoneforge Mystic. Well, then, play a land. Get a thing on Ingenious Smith. See if we can kill Teferi. Kill Teferi, attack the opponent. If they just kill Ingenious Smith, that's fine. Teferi's a couple turns away from bouncing a second thing. Pathing what? Pathing the Ingenious Smith. That's fine. Sure thing. I'll get a free land. This is how we're going to beat him, is just having better card draw. Put them to 14. All right. Then we play something we want to bait them into countering. So here's another Esper Sentinel. Do you want me to have another Esper Sentinel? You're fine with me having another Esper Sentinel. Okay. Are you fine with me having Relic of Progenitus? All right, now, Stoneforge Mystic. I mean, we'll get to draw another card because of the new Esper Sentinel. Oh no, they let me have it. All right, here's Cauldron Complete. All right, start nugging their thing down. If they Wrath this next turn, that's kind of annoying. But I suppose I can also just wait till our turn to Wrath because of Teferi. I would do it now, though, before Stoneforge Mystic has a chance to put that thing into play, if they have it. They could also just steal our Cauldron Complete, I suppose. Yeah, here, here, it, here it comes. Yeah. Kind of saw that coming, but we do get to draw a card. A Dark Steel Citadel. Okay, so now we really need to kill three fairies somehow. Another Stoneforge Mystic, you say? Well, one of these. Are you counting the Ingenious Smith triggers I've missed? I'm at Thresher. Play out Stoneforge Mystic. Go get, um, wait, Nettle Cyst at this point. Play out Portable Hole, but it really has no target. So I just missed another Ingenious Smith trigger because I keep forgetting how that card is played. All right, come on. We are hopefully putting them on the ropes. But they can bounce the Stoneforge Mystic with three Fairy now. Hmm. Celestial Colonnade, not the worst thing to see. Okay, they give up on Teferi to do that. As long as they don't have a second Teferi, I don't feel that bad. Oh, come on. Boo. They have a second. No, what's this? Big Teferi. Okay, well, now I really wish I had Ingenious Smith be a little bit more swole. So now they got to counter something. Yep. Springleaf Drum, fascinating. It gets slightly bigger. If I can somehow... Nettle Cyst and then equipped Nettle Cyst. That's five mana. One, two, three, four, five. One, one, two, three, four, five. So I can bait out with the Stoneforge Mystic. Okay. So please counter Stoneforge. No, didn't counter Stoneforge. Just keep getting things out of our deck. All right. I mean, is the plan here now to counter the Nettle Cyst? No, it's not. Well, please don't have Path. I realize I'm asking a lot. I realize I asked them for a lot of cards on that. All right, seven, seven. Kill Big Teferi. Now, they could be slow rolling me, but that means in the next couple turns, we should be able to just roll them. Nope, here's Path. Okay, well, we tried. We tried real hard. Now they're going to start drawing so many cards a turn. They're already the Path to Exile, so they probably don't have Snapcaster Mages. This is something big. Or is it just... No, it's not activating Colonnade. Deploy the Gatewatch. Okay. <laughs> I have never seen that played. I knew it existed. It seems more like a Commander thing than a Modern thing, but I'm, I'm into it. Ooh, a Jace. All right, they get to untap two lands. 
So if they have, so they got they get, they have to bounce the Stoneforge Mystic, right? They can't J Storm. No, they're J Storming. Okay, so they're just gonna let me put Cauldron into play, which is nice. Oh, but it might get exiled again because they get to untap stuff with Teferi. Okay, so I feel like what they're doing is um the. Archmage's charm. Well then, that changes things a little bit. What do you say to this opponent? Come on. Oh no, they're gonna let me do it. Um, let's see, probably to fairy. Fairy here of Dominaria. Cool. That's sorted there. Now they still are willing to let Cauldra come in. I have enough mana to move Cauldra if they steal the germ, or I could just portable hold the germ. Oh, they're gonna opt. Okay. Weird. Here comes Cauldra complete. And let's just do this. 12, 12. Can I do lethal? I mean, I'm going for lethal. If if it gets exiled, it gets exiled. But, you know, I feel like we have to make them have it. We've already seen two paths. So what are the chances they have a third? No, come on. Oh, I'll find another land. Uh, okay, well, we'll relic you again. Guy who literally has all of his path to exiles. I think next turn is combat thresher and start putting stuff on it. Four mana thus far. Cryptic Command. That's unfortunate. He's playing He's playing a boomer control list and showing that there's still strength in the old list. Because boy, have I not seen a Cryptic Command in quite some time. Yep, back to untapping stuff. They're J-storming again. I mean, for them to have the final path would be really unlucky. Ah, uh, Teferi Time Raveler. Okay, um, pops the Stoneforge back to my hand then? Yeah. Ah, oh boy. Could really use an Urza Saga right about now. Planes! That's what I always ask for. More planes. So, pass with prototype. Really? Solitude is fascinating. One, two, three. So I could I could put all of my mana into equipping combat thresher with cauldron complete. And then I can put my opponent to one. I mean, again, I realize I keep swinging for the fences, but it seems like the right thing to do. Because if they have their fourth path to exile, like, what could you possibly do about that? All right. So... We get to attack, we can put them to one. But honestly, I think we have to kill Teferi. I think they only have the one Teferi. And once he's down, there's a lot less we need to worry about. All right, relic him up. Now he can still bounce it with Jace, but we can just replay it. Another opt, still just digging. So this deck, it's not super old, but it seems to be pre um, Modern Horizons 2. This seems to be a Modern Horizons 1 era control list with, you know, Pet cards in it. Again, our opponents are taking a minute, but it looks like this guy's trying to do some kind of math, like probably bounce the Calder Complete with a Petty Theft and then bounce the actual Thresher itself with Jace would be the best thing, then tick up to Fairy. Archmage's Jarm draw two. Okay. Just trying to find their answer. I mean, that unbrainlocks them as well because they were brainlocked with Jace for a while. Okay, so they bounce the Combat Thresher, which leads me to believe that I gotta try and counter Combat Thresher. Luckily, I have two Combat Threshers. Voyager's Staff. Well, first things first, do you counter Combat Thresher? Um, sure, I'll pay three. Actually, I guess it is post Modern Horizons because I have that. I have another one, or I'll pay three. So we got them out of two cards out of their hand. You get to draw a card and land, that's nice. So, I think Needle? Do they have a, oh, they don't, okay. Now we get to get rid of Jace, the Mind Sculptor. Where is Jace, the uh, Mind Sculptor? There he is. Okay, so so much for Jace. Um, I want to do anything else. I guess I can play Voyager Staff. Set that up for a later sort of interaction. All right, Relic them. And I think we're in a decent spot. We have a lot of creatures in our hand. Their Jace is turned off for the time being. We got rid of Big Teferi, which was really helping them out. Seems like they drew something. Cryptic Command? Oh no, this is just, um, deploy the Gatewatch. They have more than one of those? <laughs> Please don't find anything of note. Come on. Come on. Come on! Well, the Teferi Hero of Dominaria is kind of annoying. Yep, that's a sure thing there, buddy. Sure thing. The Pithing Needle. Oh, because then they get to, yeah, yeah. Is your plan again just to bounce the Combat Thresher? No, it's to J-Storm. Okay, so now we're back into Make Him Have It mode. Although I have to imagine they have their final one. They have so many cards in their hand. All right, so they have to have something of note. Draw on other planes. So we have a million mana. First things first, do we get to Cauldre up our dude? I don't think so. I think this will be the final path. Okay, now we have five mana. Means we can spend two more, do this. And like, if they have it, they have it, but we have nothing we could do to stop this. <laughs> Combat Thresher really, really coming in if it does, but if they just path it, they path it. Come on. Cryptic Command. So return tap. That's not bad. So that's still a 10-10, and that means next turn we get to do that. So what do we want to do here? 
I think what we want to do is one, two, three, play another combat thresher, find a treasure vault, sure, relic them again, and I think that's all we do. If they have a wrath, they have a wrath, but Cauldron Complete should come down next turn. Are they just, just going straight to wrath? Looking like it. Another deploy the Gatewatch. Why would they deploy the Gatewatch before they did all their artifact stuff? You know, ask a silly question. <laughs> Ugin? Oh boy, okay, well. Unfortunately, we played our combat threshers as white spells. So they can just tick down for three, get rid of both combat threshers. For under five minutes, this is only game two. I don't know why they're being so slow on the Ugin Wrath, but I know it's coming. Three damage. That, gotta try and win by ticking up Ugin. There's the Pithing Needle. So, first thing first. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Aldra complete. Another Cryptic. Looking like it. Force of Negation, just to get rid of it. Sure. Um... Hmm. I mean, no, no way we get to just attack with Combat Thresher. This thing dies somehow. Oh, now they're going to cryptic counter draw in control. Oh, sure. Their last thing that they're waiting on has to be a path, right? Otherwise we get them. We win the match. We just win 5-0 technically. Let's let's talk about that in the wrap up. Oh, my. So what did we learn today? That was great. That. That was so much fun. Um, obviously, the first couple matches, we had some some salting going off. But uh, once we found some people willing to actually play against us, we really saw the power of this deck. And this is what I probably refer to as no win taxes or no win mono white artifacts, essentially. Uh, and by no win, I don't mean it doesn't win. It doesn't really have an individual win con, kind of like Eldrazi and taxes back in the day. Well, people look at it and they're like, OK, but how do you win? And the answer is a whole bunch of different ways. Uh, I was happy with pretty much everything in this list, including Nettlesist. Um, there might be some argument that instead of Nettlesist, maybe you want the happy hat and maybe splash a couple black cards in here. But overall, I think the deck works quite well. I know why everything's in here, and I just think it's a fun deck to play. Now, going 5-0 with it is A, debatable, because I had the first two people just salt right out of there. But hey, it was a fun deck to play, and I, I look forward to playing with this in, in kind of different ways here and there. But as those of you who know, who stick around to the end of the video, I go into the lovely Black Void. Hello, welcome to the Sword of Black Void. Because of changing up my camera, you can see a little bit of the edges of my green screen. But I should like to show off things from the many eras of magic history. In fact, I think I caught a glimpse of it, and I think I actually have to turn the Black Void off. Give me a moment, folks. All right, now that the Black Void is off, we can properly see uh, what I consider to be one of the funniest cards, and it's not even a card, it's a life counter, that I have ever received. So again, I am a Magic Boomer, I have been around for quite some time, and back in the day, before it was Pro Tour, before there were PDQs, there was something called the Junior Super Series. And that would have been the highest level that we could have competed at back in the day. And why do I know that the Junior Super Series would have been the best thing you could have competed at back in the day? Well, looky, looky here at this here absolutely ridiculous piece of magic history. This, ladies and gentlemen, is the Junior Super Series uh, life counter that you got for showing up because I was not good at magic back then. I'm not good at magic now. Uh, I can't even use this for EDH because as you'll see in a hot second, it only goes up to 30. So if it had gone up to 40, at least then it would have been able to be used as sort of like an EDH counter. But no, this is my this is my little thing uh, from back in the day. This actually hung on my desk when I worked in Manhattan. I, I had it up on uh, my little little pseudo cubicle from back in the day, but um, couldn't tell you who that character is supposed to be. Uh, couldn't tell you why he's, you know, super, super duper man. Um, don't, don't know what's going on there. It's been a while since I've actually had this in my possession. It wasn't in Australia until I came back from the States, but boy, do I have it now. And boy, am I glad to have it back. This thing is so silly and fun. Uh, and yes, thank you guys very much for joining me on this adventure today. If you have a list you want me to look into, email me at heydummyplaythis at gmail.com. That's heydummyplaythis at gmail.com. Remember to like, comment, and subscribe. Uh, let me know in the comments what kind of videos you want to see in the future. And thanks, guys. I will catch you all next time. Later.